well, that was fun. And I am got somebody also that's fun and, and uh, also very knowledgeable here. And that is Roger Parker. I'm fun and funny. Yeah, fun, funny. I'd and, like and, to be anyway. And uh, you, you know what? I really respect that you have the vast knowledge that you have. And I've gotten some feedback from people, and they have been watching your segment. So I'm hoping mm. that, you know, um, you know, as they move along, they're going to be – they're going to be uh, starting businesses and tapping you and, and knowing that they got the information from us. So I want to welcome back to the show uh, our co-host, Roger Blaker. Thank you. Glad Blaker to be back. BlakerBusinessCoaching.com. All right. What are you going to share with us All today? All right. Let's uh, go back and do a real quick review of what we talked about the last couple of weeks. It's um, identifying that uh, it's something you'd like to explore to be an entrepreneur. Uh, to go into business for yourself. You have identified something that really you are passionate about. One of the things we covered last week is finding that passion, something that really draws you forward to step into a role of an entrepreneur, and you've gone through those processes. We've talked about some of the things to do with the financial, about funding, making sure you understand what it's going to cost you and how you're going to approach this. In other words, planning a lot. So we've gone through those processes. Um, now I want to talk about people that are either starting out in a business or they've been in business as a solopreneur for a while. So this will cover both because I've seen, I've met people that have been in a business for one or two years or more, and they're still struggling. So they could be a situation where they've been going along and they're feeling burned out. There's all kinds of reasons. Now, it isn't because they don't love what they do. It's they don't have their business structured to be able to make it successful. So this benefits somebody. I'm too busy to make money. Or, yeah, <laughs> yeah or, or they don't—they're they, not sure what am I doing. Yeah, and or I don't know. I don't know what I don't or they've know. They've gotten off track. Right, all kinds of reasons. Yeah. Or they're starting out new. So let's go okay. ahead and go through this. And you did mention to start with the who, what, and how. We want to cover that briefly today, quickly, and see if we get through it, through all of this. Mm -hmm. If we don't, we'll come back and pick up wherever. I want to make two fact points to start with, though. When you're talking about looking for customers or clients, first off, the people that you're trying to reach, remember, they're not interested in your business. They're concerned about their problem. So as a business owner, we're wanting to either provide them a service or help them solve a problem. And we, we need to look at it from the customer's point of view, not ours, not what we want to do, but being very clear about, making sure that we help them solve a problem or, or, or perform some kind of service that helps the same way. So that's number one. And what I found that people that are in business to start with or if they're starting a business, this is a pretty common thing. I did it myself. I know for sure that this can happen is we try to become all things to all people. And that would be a tendency for sure if I'm starting out, but some people still left two or three years because that isn't the issue. It's they're not organized, and they're trying to get customers. They start feeling desperate or pressure, and they're trying to say yes to anybody about getting anything that's around their business. And I want to point out that that's not a good thing to do. Getting distracted and fractured. Right. We're not trying to do yeah. too many things yeah. and trying to be all things to all people. And it's that's covering a, your bets. Right. Of. Yeah. Exactly. Good term. Yeah. <laughs> so I want to go through some things here to help narrow this down because it's very important whether you're in business and you've been doing that for a while or you're starting out and that'd be the tendency you, you would have. I want to go through some things here to look at to help a person drive out to become more specific about the person or the, the groups of people they want to reach. So I want to cover these. The who is first. So I want to make sure I cover notes here because I want to cover all the things that I've gone through and listed here is this is marketing to a specific group of people. And when I say a group of people, I want to go through some things here that kind of give it. First off, demographics. Think about demographics would be like gender or age or income level, something along those lines. And location sometimes. It could be. You're a brick and mortar. Well, you can be. Yeah, you're a very good point there. If I'm in a local market and they have to come to me, that's one thing. And that's usually a product. More There can be some services, but oftentimes it's a product. Services, or especially. But, yeah, and especially. Yeah, a service like that's brick and mortar, and that's true. Uh, so that's the first thing is who you're trying to reach and starting at that level. Now, continue driving it down. The next thing would be is like the kind of industry they're in. Are they in high tech, um, health care, retail sales, restaurants, education? What is the Fashion, field or industry they're retail. in? Yeah. And it doesn't have to be just one, but keep in mind if I'm going to market, the more that I can concentrate 
on a specific, as narrow as possible, the more energy I can put into that. So that's the reason why that. uh, that's an scattering issue that all the I, place. Yeah, I started getting scattered exactly. because my whole main focus was to was to create new shows. Yeah. So I've been so busy doing this, and I want people to create. Yeah, so. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> the next thing is like job or posi- position. Is it a CEO, a salesperson, uh, an accountant, a mid-level manager, stay-at-home moms? Uh, we've talked about that. Matter of fact, I mentioned to you when we talked briefly yesterday that I'm talking to a few clients of mine about coming on the show, and one of them I have that I've just started working with, and I mentioned it to her in our first meeting because of what she has learned and what she does, and she has an interest of taking this and actually helping stay-at-home moms maybe start a business or whatever. There are a lot of so, those people, mm-hmm. and yeah, and and that's good for self-employment. I mean, mm-hmm. that's exactly the kind of. And even if you're a consultant or a freelancer, you're self-employed. Right, and you take you yeah. take uh, 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 per, uh, people that are going through the middle life, like we've talked about, mm-hmm. starting this whole thing. A husband and, wo- uh, husband and wife could be a team of people that could do something out of their home, mm-hmm. and you're hearing a lot about or that have a now. side income. Could be. I mean, you know, that extra money that comes in. Could be. Yeah. yeah. So, but as you're building us out, though, keep those things in mind. Who are you trying to reach? Uh, the next thing is the common focus. Uh, career uh, challenges, people in midlife change, which we've talked mm-hmm. about. Uh, and business that's how we owners. Started the series because, you know, people are now, the older they are, it's hard. But I right. also see there's a lot of startups, a lot of energy and young. Imagine people getting out of college or saying they're having a hard time getting a job. So, right. they've got to be creative and they're, they're collecting. They're doing like, together and like these neat i just discovered a, a group that they all these young people they just all office together and just i mean in other words they're sharing resources maybe all, yeah. and also helps them have energy because i place mean to go and yeah. office and yeah and i and that's something i want to go ahead and we're coming okay um, i want to go ahead and mention something here too because i you and i are extroverts and we like we're very social we like to be out with people I do a business that I could, you know, I do a lot of by phone. I could do do this in my own residence and do that forever that way, but that doesn't work for me all the time because I'm very social. So doing things like this program, public speaking, um, meeting clients face-to-face when they want to because I really have a desire to. There's some limits I always want to put on that. But you, ha- you have to understand, too, what where you get your energy. And something like you're talking about, if you have people that are really wanting to do something kind of on their own, but they they need kind of that energy around them. Well, they're all kind of in the hot. They're they can the do creative, that, yeah. yeah. And they can do that and be in where they can actually have social contact, but they're still more or less a business for themselves. So there's ways to set up a business. Of course, that's kind of a side way from this, yeah. but those are the things to keep in mind. You don't want to be sitting in your home planning, okay, I'm going to do this, being a person that needs a lot of contact with people. Or, because that or will, getting, even on the phone won't, that will dry you up. You've got to be able to be in an environment that really helps energize yourself. Well, you, do, you get away, suddenly you're putting laundry, you're doing laundry, and, <laughs> and, it's, and, it's, and it's during the day. So soap I mean, operas. <laughs> no, and you're, so your time management gets, oh, yeah. I mean, not soap operas, but maybe things that need to be done. But you go, oh, right. I'm here, I'm going to run a load. Well, you wouldn't be doing it at the office. Yeah, well, that comes back to, I hope yeah. I have another program about yeah. self-discipline. Because I don't do anything, even though I'm a resident a lot. Uh, TV yeah. never goes on and whatever, and no laundry. Well, I have no TV on, but I have yeah, that computer go. going. Okay. So therefore, there you got those things there. So what I've talked about is those are all things you'd want to put down, and that helps you by using all of those things, the, um, the demographics, the uh, industry, the job position, the common focus. You take all those things and you summarize it together, that's creating one part of how to identify, how to focus in on a particular market. So the, that's the who, which is your market area. Then your what. It's what you do. It's, it's what your intended uh, results, your market, your niche is going to be. And two things about that, you must address these two things. That is a specific result or benefit. Again, being specific because people oftentimes aren't. They're not real clear. They need to be clear of what benefit or result their client is going to get, customer is going to get by doing business with them, or you help them solve a problem. So there's three things there, and it could be a combination, but being very clear on that. You've heard people oftentimes, and I don't know how many, they even got people to teach people how to do that 30-second elevator speech mm-hmm. you hear about, how to be specific and clear, how to, how to create interest by what we say. Well, you'll know that you do the job for them, too. 
and and you also know how to help them get there. Right, and that's the point. Now that's that's driving out giving results, and that's going to be the yeah. how. Result, my results I, junkie over there. Yeah, you're kind of you're kind of segue me right yeah. in because that's the next thing is how because yeah. you might talk about that's what I'm going to do, but how are you going to do it? Now I'm going to give you a key here. This is really important to make maybe help someone get more clear about exactly how they do it because when I talk to a client and we go through the consultation process. I have a five-step process I take them through, but after I talk to them and really find out what their issue is in that first consultation and kind of drill down on some of that, from my five steps and what I've heard of them from them, what their issue and how we've coached around it some, I give them specific things I see that we're going to try to accomplish. And one of the things I've told you before, too, is I do like a two-hour intake with a new client to start with because we lay out a real strategy for maybe a year, and then we back that back into uh, manageable steps. We shorten it down. But all of that really helps get clear about exactly what we're going to do and accomplish. So that how is being able to do that. Now, here's the way to help a person maybe get clear about uh, of the how or how they're going to do it. You write down what is the first thing that you're going to either the product or service, what's the first thing you're going to uh, help that client with? What's the first thing you're going to help them achieve or, or accomplish or whatever? And then once that, once that first thing is done, what is the next thing you're going to do? And then after you answer that question, what is the next thing? And keep asking yourself that over and over again. When I'm helping someone, what is it, and then what's next, and then what's next? This is all a lot, a lot, a lot of homework. And for a lot of people, like myself, trying to do this by myself in a vacuum, just trying to think of it myself, doesn't work. Um, I'm one of the kind of the people that... Um, I need to have somebody that I'm dialoguing. You and I have talked about this. Mm -hmm. I need to be able to interact with somebody because they can be asking me questions, want to make a statement, and it helps me drill down. point of it is you want to uh, be able to do these things as effectively as possible, as possible, and it may not be by yourself. It may be with somebody else, but you do want to drill down those questions. What do I do? And then you have somebody dialoguing with you or, or whatever source you use. Well, I help them go through the process of identifying what their exact issue is. You've been dealing that with yeah. me. And once I, once I do with that, okay, how do I break it apart and what the next step would be? And after that step's accomplished, what then? If I have a product that provides them a, a, a product I sell them, after they get that product, what will that help and what is my own going service I provide them after that product? And just you keep drilling down. Because you really just don't want to sell and run. <laughs> right. Well, we know service is a huge part. Even yeah. if you sell a product, that follow-up service is where you, it's what is the thing I put this in newsletter for. It's not about finding new customers or clients. It's a, it's a lot easier to keep doing things for your existing ones and getting referrals off this than continue to try to always go find new ones. Mm -hmm. It's a lot more efficient for you, a lot more income generation. Okay, taking those two things and combining them together. Then you take that all and massage it together, and what you're looking for is a, a just a real clear statement of what I'm going to do, how I'm going to do it, and who I'm going to reach. So that drills into the process. And is that um, just a, okay, we've got a little more time left. So anyway, that covers these processes that I wanted to go through the who, what, and how. Uh, next week, I want to talk more about the how, and we're going to step into the marketing. And I'm going to throw some things out here that may help some people get clear about marketing because I think it's a lot of misunderstanding and also there's so much out there that you know and sometimes right. yeah it 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 is it's kind of like taking a big ball and bundling it so you know right yes and so marketing is a very important piece and I'm going to throw some things out there that may have a different twist on it matter oh, of fact I'm going to try to I'm going to try to uh, get some things that maybe be able to put it on the screen out here well I see you, and get you got them to that you. I said I would love to be able to include that at the website so that people might I'll get this to you okay so we'll put that up at yep, the website absolutely and so that they can download what he right. just said and you'd have these points because you know if you follow along um, and, and and any reference to it because this is good this is good teaching and they can get a hold of you at uh, my number is two one four four eight five two two three eight I'm on Twitter Roger Blaker R O D G E R Blaker that's one word and Facebook if you just go look Facebook with Roger Blaker the two name words you'll find me that way too so okay. and, you can find and, my website from there and my blog coaching. and all that in there Blaker okay. Business Coaching well they're exactly. about to they're about to make us go black if we, right. don't, we don't do it all right. thank you and we're going to see you next week all right. bye okay well we're going to be back with Clayton Bailey and John McGinnis. 
and uh, we're going to be talking LED lighting, and I'm excited, and I just can't wait. So three minutes, we'll be back. 